Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. Hey everyone, I'm Luke, cinematographer living in Taiwan. And today we are talking about The Legend of the Mountain from 1979, directed by King Hu. So this film is set in the Song Dynasty and it's about a scholar who is sent to like a remote mountain monastery to copy some Buddhist sutras yeah. that are supposed to, rumored to have control over like the afterlife, right? The power of control the afterlife to uh, upgrade your crisis after you, uh, you okay. die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these dead like ghosts and spirits try to steal it from him. It's a, technically like a horror movie, but it's yes. more about like the atmosphere and like weird things happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like interesting cuts and like just like like he'll change the filter the color of the it's more about a feeling right yeah more about the atmosphere mm. yeah so it's like that was some one thing i read was that it's a horror movie but it's not about scaring you it's about giving you like a creep creepy atmosphere yeah. and telling you this like chinese kind of folk tale yeah there's a lot of legendary tale about some ghosts in the mountains mm. like try to steal your life so they can kind of upgrade with because they are ghosts, right? They yeah. needed to find someone to replace them. So in this kind of, of movie, for me, it's about... Actually, in the beginning, I don't know, it's Buddhist or Tao oh, legendary. Because okay. they all mix together. Is it Buddhist or is it you know, Chinese Tao? In the beginning, I thought it's a love though because the main character, they are in, like, kind yeah. of like each other and they yeah. can't even get married. Well, that's like the, I think that's like the most clear part of the plot is that the main character ends up getting tricked by one of the ghosts into marrying her. Yeah. And then he later falls in love with a different ghost. And so then the original ghost gets kind of mad. So I feel like the, the main kind of story that is going on is one about like when you're married and then you fall in love with like another, another <laughs> person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And... and so it's, it's a little bit weird because they're trying to make those ghosts to be really bad. Mm. Even even in the beginning, I think, well, there's a lot of tale about ghosts with love with men, right? Yeah. In kind of well, and in Chinese like folklore, there's always like the Hu Li Jing or something like that. Like yeah. a guy who gets tricked by a woman, right? Yeah. It's like a very common thing. Yeah. Pretty common. But for me, my I don't I don't think... They try, I, I think they, dis, they, they want to make the ghost bad to be bad, the good to be good. But it's too separate for me in this movie. Really? It's, it just I kind of disagree, actually. Really? Yeah. Did you think the woman ghost mm. is a pure bad ghost? No, no, I don't, actually. The interesting thing about the movie is that like all of the ghosts are set up like their character motivation and all the things that happen to them is set up very nicely really? like you you see all the backstories of all, how all the ghosts became ghosts and you oh. see like their thinking and like you actually actually throughout the movie i kind of you kind of don't know what which ghosts are like trying to hurt him and which ghosts are helping and they actually throughout the movie they kind of switch back and forth where sometimes the ghosts are helping him and sometimes they're they're trying to trick him and they go uh, like uh, all the different ghosts will flip yeah. what they're doing so I actually think the way that he sets up the ghosts is he makes the ghosts way more complex, complex. than even the real guy you know like the real like the alive person mm -hmm. is actually very simple and he just kind of wanders through the movie like oh okay I'll walk over here and then oh this ghost uh, he never really does anything but all of the ghosts have all these like interesting motivations and interesting things that they're doing so the ghosts are actually the real interesting characters in the film the main character yeah. It's so soft. I think he didn't even know which one he liked the most. Yeah. He just bumped into anyone and he liked anyone. For me, it's just like, I don't really get into the main character. I don't really. Well, so, this know is something him. I wanted to discuss is like, I think, I really do believe, I've said this before when we talked about King Wu's other films, yeah. is I really feel like he is like one of the most like pro feminist filmmakers i've ever seen right, because yeah. a lot of times when you watch a movie it's a female character that acts like the main male character in this film is like they don't really do much they don't really have much agency they just kind of let everybody else in the film tell them what to do and that's exactly what this guy acts like like the yeah. women tell him to do something and he's like okay okay i will do it yeah 
And then he, whoever he's with, he's like, oh, she's being nice to me, so I'll follow her and do what she says. And then the new woman comes and he's like, oh, actually, I'll just follow her. Yeah. And she's telling me the other girl is bad, so okay, she must be bad. So, but really, the female characters are the ones that have their own ideas and their own like thoughts about what they want to do. Yeah. And so I really feel like this director has this view of women as like being really powerful and men as being kind of weak and just like... Yeah. And just like... Yes, yeah, good point. Use, useless. For this whole movie, I just don't know what's the point of this guy. He just kind of something people push around and he has no his mind. Yeah. All he has to do is just copy the textbook. Yeah. And nothing else. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, pretty interesting. The woman dominated all the story. Yeah. And you push the story forward, but the man seems to be just like nothing. Yeah, and I I get what you're saying about like that. There's one that's good and one that's bad, but like I de- I do think that he does set up like a lot of reasoning as to why she is like that because in the beginning she they when they do a flashback of her life she was like the favored musician right and the in for the i don't know the government the official government, or something like general, yeah. yeah but then she got replaced by the younger prettier girl so she, got so she gets jealous and angry and and so that changes her and so it sets up kind of like a you kind of i kind of was like oh yeah, i feel a little bad for her because she oh, she got replaced yeah yeah so she has like and he should become a de- uh, yeah the evil one goes yeah yeah um i think one of the really good things about this film is that the well, the main thing is that it looks really amazing. Like, the print of the film is restored. So, the one that you'll find is the long version. It's, like, the director's cut. And it's been remastered. And it looks, like, really, really Fantastic. beautiful. Like, the color that you see in this is, like, it's crazy. Superb. And then I think, like, the other thing that's really good about it is that, you know, you can tell it's super low budget. It's, like, a horror movie. But there's, like, no special effects in it, really. Yeah. But... He uses like really good rhythmic editing and sound cues yeah. to to elicit the emotion of like fear or like mm-hmm. oh something weird is happening. It's mm-hmm. all with like the way he cuts and the way he edits. Mm-hmm. And I think I mean I just think it's a good study of okay how do you edit a scene or use music cues to show something, you know. And the special effects are just like limited to like sometimes there's like smoke yeah, just or like like things happen in like shadow or something or like some stuff blows up yeah like he used a lot of like explosions or something like that but so like that i think that's the good side of it i think the bad side is it's way too long (laughs) like it doesn't need to be three hours i'd say like maybe a hundred minutes of this film is nature he's enough he's well he's filming like like there's so many shots of just like guy walking through the forest yeah guy walking through the forest (laughs) oh there's a there's some trees zoom in on the lotus flower zoom in on the thing and the drowning part is way much longer than i expect to like yeah the drumming to... thing is interesting though it's an interesting idea i liked that concept i almost i was wondering if um you see get out right yeah I see. uh the thing with the cup like in the movie in get out like the woman uh uses a cup oh, to right. hypnotize to and in this movie she uses the drum to do like the same thing i That's wonder if they're if he watched this movie <laughs> Maybe because it's like exactly the same. He she yeah. uses the drum the to like hypnotize the guy and put him yeah, to sleep. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's got like a similar kind of thing of like, and it's kind of creepy, like the idea of like whenever she uses her drum, she can just like control people Controlling around. Controlling people's so. mind. Yeah, the tradition story, trend, legendary story is always fascinating people, mm. especially when you was young and you tended to be believe those story is real, is real, is existing. And then for this kind of movie, if you watch it in your very young age, I believe you will get much more fun than we were as adults. I don't know. There's yeah. more Im- imagination room for you to kind of expand in. But in our age, especially in nowadays, there's too much things going on. So if you look back for this old movie, you can still learn a lot. But depends on how your imagination is still well, remaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I think that it could just... I'd be curious to watch the shorter version because I wonder if it's, even, it's actually better. Yeah. Like, it, it's probably... Because I think there's a lot of good points to it and there's lots of interesting, like, story points that happen, but they're just kind of spread out too much. Too much. So, like, if it was kind of condensed, I think it could be a better movie, actually. Yeah, I think so. And then... 
And then the other thing is like, I think this is a great movie that would that would work as a remake. And, you know, they remake a lot of movies these days. Like they remade Candyman, mm. and they remake like uh, like horror movies or whatever. And my rule of remakes is like, you shouldn't remake a movie that's really good. That doesn't make any sense. No. Like the movie's already good. Like you can just go watch the original one and it's good. It's great. Yeah, yeah. But you should remake a movie that has potential to be great. Yeah. Or like that, that like used to be great, but maybe it's outdated now, like this movie. Mm-hmm. And then you can remake it and bring out a lot of the cool, interesting themes and update it for audiences now. That would make a really good remake. Yeah. So I feel like this movie would make a really good, like would be really good to yeah. remake. I can direct it too. Yeah, <laughs> please find it. <laughs> um, yeah, would, this would be my first movie that I'd want to remake. All right, <laughs> so check it out. Legend of the Mountain, King Who. He has a lot of great films. I would say watch maybe, if you haven't seen any of his films, I wouldn't watch this one first. I would watch like Touch of Zen or okay. Dragon Inn first. Yeah, but, Dragon but Inn is the best. if you like him as a director, you, you know, definitely check it out. All right, uh, let us know if you want us to review anything. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. Bye bye.